podcast taking over for the 99 and 2000. Welcome to episode 5 of the Say What Now podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yes, this is episode 5 of the Say What Now podcast, and today we have J Nose. What up, fam? And we have Oliver. What up, what up, what up? And I am T Reed. Let's catch up on everybody's week. Jay, how was your week? Oh my god, I had such an amazing week. Well, the week wasn't that great, but the weekend was awesome. I went on an amazing retreat with my line sisters and my little sisters. Shout out to O two and O three, Omicron A to DSC. We had an amazing, 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 amazing time. Lots of bonding, lots of love, lots of laughter. Love them so much. They are some of our biggest supporters. So, yeah, amazing weekend. All right. Good job. I love them, too. I love them, too. <laughs> <laughs> and they love you. <laughs> right, Oliver, how was your week? Oh, it was cool. Uh, just got back here, actually, to uh, L.A., like, on Saturday. So, uh, busy week in New York last week. But other than that, all good. I'm here. I'm, I'm healthy. <laughs> I was going to stun on y'all and do this outside because I am in LA chilling with Oliver and yeah oh, and the weather is very nice but there's too much noise going on outside so I decided to keep my stunt to a minimum <laughs> <laughs> I think it's yard day yeah it's got to be yard day outside but either way I'm looking forward to the rest of this week Wait, I just want to say, even though I'm not there and I'm super jealous, it's no secret. I hope you have a great week in sunny California. Oh, I oh. but not as great as the time as you would have had if I was there. Wait a I, minute, no. <laughs> you know. All right, so yeah, let's go into shout out. So, does anyone have a shout out before I give mine? Take uh, it away. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't have one this week. All right, so I'll make this one quick. Um, I'm giving a shout out to the students of the University of Missouri and the football team of the University of Missouri. Well, first and foremost, the the end result, the Missouri University System President, Tom Wolf, he resigned Monday. Now, he had been coming under fire because he had not been dealing with a lot of um, racial situations very well. Like he had, he had done next to nothing in regards to some very racially charged incidents that have happened uh, within the university system. Say, going back to September the 12th, the student government president, Peyton Head, he was attacked, well, not attacked physically, but attacked verbally. People were screaming racial slurs at him on the back of a pickup truck, and the university did nothing about it. Mm. And... So the students had protests about it. They had two protests, as a matter of fact, regarding the university's lack of action regarding that. Then on October 4th, a drunken white student disrupted a group uh, of African-American students called the Legion of Black Collegians because they were preparing for homecoming activities, and he hurled racial slurs at them. Again, the university did absolutely nothing mm-hmm. about it. A couple days after that, the university ordered diversity and inclusion training for students and faculty, but that's not starting until 2016. So again, that does absolutely yeah. nothing about the situation that just happened. Okay. Exactly. So, <laughs> uh, October the 10th was the University of Missouri's homecoming. So during the homecoming parade, protesters, um, went and blocked the president's car during the homecoming parade to voice their concerns. And he didn't respond to their complaints then either or after. So again, university president was doing absolutely nothing regarding this. Uh So there's a student group on the campus called Concerned Student 1950. They get 1950 because that's the year that African-American students were first allowed to attend the University of Missouri. So they issued a series of demands, one of which included the an apology from Wolf, the uh, current president or actually ex-president. And his removal from office. And they got nothing. October 24th, some student drew a swastika on one of the residence halls. Wow. Oh, oh that, that's not even the, the, the tip of the iceberg. This swastika was drawn on the wall of the residence hall using shit. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. What? Yeah. So What are they doing down there? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. 
Exactly. So who's grabbing shit and making swaths? Well, that was a know, nasty, so. dumb motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and that's some shit exactly. that makes say what now? Exactly. So, again, and even after all of this, nothing's happening. I think he's a student body president. He went on a hunger strike. This happened November 3rd. And he said he was not eating another meal until this uh, wolf was removed from office. Uh, his name is Wolf, not an actual wolf. Mm-hmm. Until he was removed from office. So November 3rd, he went on a hunger strike. November 4th, the students started to boycott in support of this guy's hunger strike. So this thing is starting to pick up steam over the last week. Quick question. Is the student body president black or white? He is black. Got it. Okay. Yeah, he is black. So, so he has his hunger strike. Then... On November the 8th, this is kind of where it took off and it, it started to get media attention across different platforms, you know, like ESPN and everything, because the black football players at the University of Missouri said that they were not going to play or practice until this guy was removed from office. They posted a photo with it. You know, they were all locked arm in arm, you know, in, in a show of solidarity. And to take it even further... The athletic department of the university and the white players all backed those black students and said, we're not playing, we're not practicing until this guy's out of office. And this was November the 8th. Wow, that is awesome. Exactly. That was November the 8th. So November the 9th, as of the morning of November the 9th, nothing was happening. But by the afternoon, Wolf resigned and he's currently out of office. So... Want to do it? Yeah. So shout out to not just the football team out of the University of Missouri, but shout out to those students because yeah. they could have easily just backed down and let it be business as usual, but they kept at it, kept at it. They saw that something was wrong and they fought until he resigned. So shout well, out. You know how them go? Yeah. Shout out. I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was done. No, yeah, I, was I think, saying, I think, oh. go ahead. I was about, no, I was just about to say, you know, I think that's, awesome that you know it it took some while to get some traction it sounds like but once they did and then i also love the fact that you know they had the white supporters as well since Mm -hmm. i know a lot of people think that you know white people don't support black people but just look at what you can do whenever you come together and Mm -hmm. join forces um you know you can get results so yeah you threaten to cut off their sports they get exactly (laughs) and and that was the catalyst for it when as soon as you say it's Uh, all about cutting off sports it's like oh we might need to do something about it now yeah, because then that's donors and all this other shit. Mm-hmm. No, that part pissed me off. About what? That it took so long? Um, the football players to take a stand and then the world, you know, got to see mm-hmm. what was going on. Because, you know, I mean, I get it and I can appreciate the outcome, but at the same time, it just goes to speak volumes over, you know, how little power some people have even when they're trying to do the right thing. Exactly. But either yep. way, shout out to them and... I hate to say I hope this guy never gets a job again, but I hope this guy never gets a job again. Everybody okay. deserves second chances. <laughs> after he takes his own uh, racial and ethnic and co-training, after he takes that, okay. then maybe he can. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll put that. We'll do that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's my shout out for the week, and let's move. Let's move into word on the street. Okay, so family. Welcome to this week's episode of Word on the Street. Just remember, you heard it directly from us, but we didn't hear it directly from them. So this is simply Word on the Street. street. Let's okay. So before we even get started, okay. So last week, I we were talking about a Holly Berry, Miss Berry. So I just want to, I don't necessarily want to, however, comma. So I was on Instagram, and this guy named Stereo Williams, he made a comment, and it says, like I said. Divorces make Holly Berry a quote unquote failure, but they make Steve Harvey an expert. Mm. And I was like, damn, mm. you know, made me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Holly, I still think you need to get it together with your love life. However, comma, I do apologize because like after I read that, I was like, damn, it gave me a totally different perspective that I hadn't thought about before. So I know you'll probably never hear this podcast, but you never know. Never say never. So, Holly Berry, I apologize for picking on you for not being able to get your life together. Okay? All right. Now, we can carry on. So, did you guys hear about um, the gay couple who uh, they adopted each other and now they're trying to reverse their adoption? It's super weird. No. They adopted each other? 
Well, How okay. does that happen? Okay, so back in 2012, so you know, it's just just in 2015 where it was legalized for, you know, all gays to be married. So mm-hmm. back in 2012, this couple had been dating for 40 years mm-hmm. and they wanted the legal benefits of being uh, married and just the legal family recognition of being married. But they couldn't get it because, you know, marriage was not legal at that time. So they found a loophole that they uh, found out if one adopted the other, then they could have that full legal family recognition as well as receive family benefits because now one would be a dad and one would technically be the son. So that's what they did. So in 2012, um, one adopted the other. So they are living as father and son, even though they're in a relationship. Again, they've been together for 40 years. But now that it's 2015, they're trying to get the judge to reverse that shit because they just want to be husband and husband instead of father and son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. Shout out to them for finding the loophole to, to do all that. But oh, man. Uh, this was is, it that yeah. serious? I pose, but again, I'm not, I, like, I'm not in a, a same sex relationship, but I know that was very important for some same sex people. Like, I, cause, and you know, we talk about, it, we used to talk about it in class all the time, like the benefits that they don't have. So they've been together for 40 years, but if one of them was to get sick and his family only in the hospital, they couldn't visit that person. So like from that standpoint, I get it. It sounds a little desperate. You know, they were trying to get around in some kind of way. But the shit is still crazy. But my thing is, if they were, <laughs> how old can you be to be adopted? Well, apparently, <laughs> apparently you can adopt anybody at any time. So anybody need a mama so I can give me some benefits or something, I can adopt. You might be 45. I might be younger than you, but I will adopt it. Like, apparently, it don't matter. Yeah, apparently, it don't. Uh, I just think they're in a fucked up situation. Good luck for them trying yeah, to get exactly. out that shit. I don't know what to tell you, boss. You should have waited three years. Exactly. Like, how many times have they been to the doctor in the last three years to exercise these benefits? Uh, I mean, you never know. You never know. Huh? That's, if they've been that's together true. for 40 fucking years, then everybody <laughs> who got something to say probably already did. <laughs> So it won't nobody but just them two anyway. <laughs> anyway whatever. Okay. But yeah, I yeah. thought that Good was. Luck. Good luck. I thought, yeah, I thought uh, where that are was they at? Where they live at? Um, it did not say where they live, but they had Hispanic names. But I mean, they live um over here. Um, but um, yeah, they had Hispanic names. So they, I also thought was smart interesting. system. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, that's what so people I, do. They I, I up. Sound insensitive, but yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It is what. But it is. yeah. Good luck. Yeah. So yeah, good luck guys with getting that uh decision reversed and being able to live happily as husband and husband. But either so, way, I don't know if any additional. Uh, wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. So can't uh cause you know how <laughs> children try to go get emancipated. Can't be <laughs> emancipated. Um, uh, now there is an age limit to emancipation. Like you have to be uh yeah, you oh. have to be a teen or something to be well, he <laughs> Exactly. So, there should be an age limit on adoption then. Exactly. There should be an age limit on adoption. That is uh, pretty ridiculous. But uh yeah. So yeah, good luck with that. Moving on to this fool. Now this fool made me say, say what now for real? Yeah, I hear about the police officer um, that was in some shady shit and instead mm-hmm. of just suffering the consequences, he decided to commit suicide and make it look like a homicide. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But can I ask you one question? Did he say uh-huh. that it was black people who, who he was chasing? Well, or he, luckily, it was, luckily, it was two white men and a black man. I was so happy mm-hmm. it wasn't all black because that would have really pissed me off. Yeah, that would have really pissed me off too. Yeah. So for the family that doesn't know, it was a police officer in Illinois and he had been, um, uh, stealing money from the, this, uh, youth program at the police department. And so he was, uh, using the money to buy things and he was giving out personal loans to people. Like he was the bank. He was paying his mortgage. Like he was doing a whole shitload of stuff. And so, um, they kind of caught on to what was going on. This has been going on for years. And so once he found out that he was under investigation and he was about to get in some trouble and that's how you know this motherfucker crazy because he shot himself twice. So what he did was he went to this neighborhood. He radio in that, um, he was on on foot he was pursuing um three suspects two white guys and a black guy and nobody ever heard from him again so they found him 
Um, and so it looked like he had been shot. Well, he was shot twice, but it w- it made it seem like he had been shot by the quote unquote suspects that he was pursuing. But um, after, of course, but I mean, he's a police officer. He know they do investigations. So I don't understand how he didn't realize that with ballistics and angles and all this other stuff. I watch CSI and I know this shit. Like his <laughs> his attempts were going to be null and void, which they actually were. So. But either way, he shot himself twice, once in his vest, and they said it hit his cell phone, and then once um in his upper torso. I don't understand how you shoot yourself twice. Like, maybe mm-hmm. you could convince yourself to shoot yourself the first time, but twice? <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. a horrible death. He, he is a fool, honey. He done. So, um, yeah, like, I understand police officers not wanting to be in jail and prison and all that other shit, but I just can't see myself shooting myself twice to be dead. Like, that's just too much. <laughs> Get away from to escape. Like, from your crime. Crime. I feel like I would have shot myself the first time like, oh, oh, so, oh, yeah, I ain't about to do this. This ain't about to go down. They just gonna have to get me. Like I'm about to call this in, come pick me up. I need a bus. That's that's what they call the uh, ambulance. I need a bus oh, okay. to come get me. Officer okay. down. Yeah, I CSI. That's what I'm saying. He should have known. He was gonna get caught. Damn. I need a bus. Come pick me up. But yeah, um, yeah, good luck to his family. Like, that's just a bizarre situation. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what other dumb shit you got going on? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, uh, before we get to, so let's go back again to last week. So Yusef Mack, the boxer. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we were talking about how he had came out and said first it was he was drugged and forced to do gay porn. Mm-hmm. And then it was he was bisexual. Mm-hmm. Now he just all the way gay. Oh. All right. Yes. Okay. One other rev- revelation. And, and I so cannot rev- believe I almost tried to stand up for this fool. <laughs> you were standing up for him. You was on his you was on his side like I no. was just trying to get a man the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. I was just saying like he they the, the studio done probably done blackmailed him or said they were gonna I don't know. I just felt bad for the brother just a little bit. Yeah, trying to take out for him. I did. You did. But then this idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and not only did he say he was gay, he had a whole gay party at the gay club in LA to let you know he real gay. All jokes aside, no question about it. So he had like a my super sweet sixteen for him. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. He had a whole like I'm coming out situation. <laughs> now I'm coming. Was there a camera for that? Out. I want the world to Good know. question. You think he might be setting himself up for it? But you know gay is very popular these days, so maybe he's trying to ride that way. You know, I was remembering when you were talking about the other day when you were like, like, gay is like so old. And oh my God, it's on. They find a way to throw it into every TV show. Like, I just know gay is coming. Like, by this point, like, I just expect on every TV show. Yeah. So, yeah, this could be, it could be real. It could not. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see how it plays out. Hmm. I want to see him in real life kissing a man in public I might apparently believe. that video got it all up there so he like <laughs> that, that was everything. for money though that was for oh, money uh, uh, yeah. Uh. yeah I just want to see him cuddled up with his boo holding hands walking down the street uh, and then I might believe okay yeah you just never know what people nowadays they do um some of everything for money um so yeah speaking of money Arnie. did y'all hear about uh Master P having to pay $30,000 a month I heard about that, and what surprised me about the whole situation is I thought the nigga was broke. I did too. So apparently he ain't. Mm. ain't. Yeah, still got some um, getting checks out here in these streets. Where is he getting checks and that's from? What it's doing. Please tell me where he's getting I checks from. I don't know. <laughs> no limit ain't dropped the album since two thousand one. I don't know. Um, was he um like his son's manager, uh, L- Lil Romeo's manager, or anything at, ever? And like, Probably, was, is he making money off of him? When the last time you heard anything from Romeo outside of ICDC? Oh no, but I know one of his daughters has it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, his um, he got a daughter that's on the. That, I don't know if she's still on that show, but she was in on, on like a Disney or Nickelodeon show. So uh. if he got his kids making money, I'm pretty sure he might be eating off of them. I'm sure he's getting a cut uh. of that. And maybe he still was just smart with his money and still like got shit and saving. I mean, he did do pretty well back in the day, but I just figured that he done went through all that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so maybe he was just smart business wise. But what do you do with thirty thousand dollars a month? Bend it. Uh well ten of it go to the kids, don't it? Oh, uh, does it? Yeah, and the rest of it go to her. So she getting twenty thousand dollars a month. Something like that. Mm-hmm. These women be eating off these babies, honey. 
Like, where she live at? What so lifestyle so. she got? She looking for a man, <laughs> right? Is she can can she adopt me? I don't never see her out in the yeah, street. Exactly. Like, exactly. <laughs> I need a new mama. Shouts out to the road. I'm sorry, ma. But you know. I just wanted to <laughs> yeah, you get adopt stuff. me long enough to pay off my student loans and then yeah. I'm emancipating myself. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to try oh, to go yeah. back and get married yeah. later on? <laughs> I want to marry my ex-mama. It's <laughs> fine. It's been known to happen yeah. for free in these streets. <laughs> um, so yeah. Oh, the other thing um that has the internet buzzing is it's fifty and Vivica beef. Like, what the fuck is up with that? Oh, Lord Jesus, did you not see? Uh, <laughs> you ain't seen the shit on the internet. I have not. Uh, well, yeah, I saw it on the internet. I saw uh, it was a lot of shade being thrown, a lot of tea being poured. Um. But so, cause I was talking to my sister and I was like, so when, so the, um, magazine cover is uh, now posted all over internet. And so like Soldier Boy, if anybody hasn't seen it, like he doesn't have on a shirt, he has on like a million chains, which Soldier Boy does. And then 50 Cent is like posted up behind him with this white covering. Like all you can see is his eyes. And mm. so my thing was, I didn't read Booty Snatcher from that picture. So <laughs> Vivica must know some shit. I don't know. Well, didn't they used to date? Yeah. They do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like she must, she must know some shit that um well, everybody don't know. So I saw um this, and basically what they was she was saying is that he's always like popping up, saying something about like I guess gay stuff, or calling somebody out for being gay, or having something to say in response to something gay. I guess, and I think it was in reference to her being on the this season of empire and in the Mm -hmm. uh andy guy was asking her what did she think about his comments and so she was like well basically um i think that's like the pot calling the kettle black or something like that and andy was like hold on hold on so before you before you go further so the comments were empire's ratings yeah down because it's too gay yeah 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 something like that and then yeah, and he was like, what do you feel about that? And she was like, uh, well, I think that's like the pot calling the kettle black. And then he was basically probing her to get, to see what she was mm-hmm. insinuating. And basically from her facial expression, it was like, yeah, 50 got some shady business going on with him in that area. So, uh, of course, it- uh, yeah, well, uh, well, in the gay area. So I guess everybody like, yeah, Candy was like, know. wait, we need to talk about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then she was like, uh, yeah, and then, yeah. So, and then, but then she like immediately referenced like that magazine cover. And then, so her her comment was like, I remember thinking that he looked like a booty snatcher <laughs> and with the cover with him and Soldier Boy on it. And of course, that is like, yeah, whatever. But then she almost tried to downplay and say that she didn't think that he was gay, but he was just a little suspect because he's always saying something. And most of the time, whenever he get people like that have so much mouth, there's usually something going on there. Like he's either trying to deflect from his own situations or whatever. So of yeah. course, Fifty Cent really to me ain't had shit to say back. And yeah, because he I, was like, "I got a bitch I, eating my ass right now." And, and I'm I was like, like, "But how is, wait, does that wait make you?" Wait, wait, yeah, on, yeah, wait. that was his response. Like, <laughs> exactly. I got a bitch eating my ass right now. I'm like, first exactly. of all, so, I feel like I you think, were just uh, <laughs> she said, "I don't my fucking ass." <laughs> No further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah, wait. Uh, he's, like, trying okay. to de- he's trying to defend himself on exactly. not being gay, and the only thing he can think of is to say he's got a girl tossing his salad right now. Yes. Yes. That's what he has to say. <laughs> that allegation. So oh. I'm just like, okay. I guess I don't know if he was trying to say because maybe she was eating his ass before, but... Either way, I'm just like 50. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a good comeback. Yeah, and she's not. been alluding to that she has stories, and so basically, I don't know what she got, but she did also, but she did come back and apologize to um, Soldier Boy and said that she wasn't talking about him; she was talking about 50, <laughs> not him. So yeah. I saw that somewhere today that she yeah she did apologize, like he wasn't her target. 50 was yeah, mm. but Soldier Boy had already clapped back with something anyway. I just think she said what she felt. Say it. Say, say it. Say <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. And it was what it was. And she probably had an attitude like, let me just go ahead. I ain't going to pour the tea, but I'm going to. Feel just a little bit. Feel it just a little bit. Okay. And with that, uh, we will be back 
after this break. Dribble on down. <laughs> 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 All right, fam. So we are back and I wanted us to get into a conversation. So last week we talked about um, expectations and what expectations look like in your household. So let me tell you a little bit about the work that I do. And let me just preface this with, I am not speaking about all people that have Medicaid. Because I'm not, I'm not generalizing to anybody. I'm just speaking specifically to the families that I have worked with. So I work uh, with the Medicaid population. So there's people with low income and their kids have behavioral problems. That's why I go into the home. But what I see whenever I go into these houses is like the opposite of what we were talking about last week. So there are like no expectations set. Um, your expectation is to, if you want to go to school, you can go to school. If not, I mean, you can sit around the house all day. A lot of these kids, they, I don't, they don't even have grades. You might as well say like that. They're, they're not doing anything while they're at school. There are no rules while they're in the home. Nobody's making them do any kind of homework. Two year olds are playing Grand Theft Auto all day. It, like they're not in any kind of daycare. Like to me, it's just setting it up for a life of no expectations beyond what the situation that they're in right then so i want to talk about that like what can we do well first of all how that impacts the whole situation whenever it comes to especially when it comes to african-american communities and the portrayal of the african-american family to uh, larger media especially when it comes to welfare and all that stuff media have you believe that it's uh blacks that are um the most the people that are getting welfare the most, but when it really is not blacks, is white. They're more white women welfare than black women. So you know, just how what I'm seeing in the homes with like no expectations, how that impacts what the greater public sees and how they view African American African Americans in general. Mm. Having no expectations in a house, you're setting that kid up for failure. Like unless that kid is just so determined to Mm -hmm. make something of themselves or, you know, just be a contributing member of society, you're setting that kid up for failure. Because when that kid gets out into the real world, the real world has expectations of you as a person. Like, you want to get a job. I don't, good job, bad job, whatever. That job has expectations for you that you have to fulfill. Otherwise, you get fired. So Mm -hmm. by not establishing some kind of order, in that child's life early, you're really setting them back. Like, I, I can't even quantify how much you're going to set them back in life, period. Yeah, I kind of agree with that because, like, having a low or to no expectations is like, what, <laughs> pardon the phrase, but what do you expect them to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's just like, I mean, there's nothing to look forward to to me it seems like and there's nothing to it just like makes a lazy mm-hmm. unambitious person mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i think it's a very 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 bad idea even if you expect your child to get a c or you know some kind of grade or go to school to be uh and be quiet or just to sit there <laughs> or just to listen like <laughs> something <laughs> don't just like just shit i mean you do what he want to do or whatever the fuck I mean, goes on just like you know, give something. And I feel like from working with this population also, children want some kind of structure, want some kind of discipline, want some kind of somebody expect something from them. Like, cause they, at some age, they're looking to perform to be rewarded for something to make them feel like some thing or worth something. Mm-hmm. So, I mm-hmm. mean, no expectations for your child to just like tell them they are not anything, not even worth being in, basically. Yeah. I, mean, I agree. No. And, I think like one of my other questions is like, where does it even start? Um, 
I uh, so fam, like I was unemployed for almost two years and I was in school. I was working on my second master's and like I tried to get food stamps, but I couldn't get food stamps because you have to work at least 20 hours a week. Or you, if you didn't have like work 20 hours a week, then like I had to have dependents and I don't have no kids. So it made me realize like how fucked up the system is. So like there are these people having like five, six kids and they're getting like 12 to $1,500 a month in food stamps. First of all, who the fuck eats that much a month? Nobody, like really. And so that's sell, why people, uh, like yeah, and that's why people end up selling. Yeah, exactly. So that's why people end up selling that shit, but it's the sit, like the system makes it so easy to stay in the system. So like if I have kids and I know that they have to eat, but I know that if I don't work like this a certain amount of time, uh, hours a week, then I can't go to school or then I'm going to lose my benefits. What's the use of me trying to better myself if I'm going to lose my benefits? First of all, I pay, well, not I pay, but you know, people that receive assistance, they pay like, I know, I've known people that pay a dollar a month in rent. Wow. Mm. Like really? And so my thing is like, they don't have any kind of motivation to get off the system. And so I feel like that just translate into like the way that they kind of run and set up their households. Like there's just no motivation to do better because it's harder to do more than it is to do nothing. Yeah. I think something like that is a learned behavior from someone else, either a parent or like a friend who is, is caught in that cycle. Because I don't, I don't think this is just something somebody aspires to. It, it can't yeah. be. I refuse to believe that. Yeah. It's something that they've learned by watching someone else who didn't care. Now, where it started in the beginning, um, it, it, you make it take it to a, a deeper conversation into institutional racism or something that has kept someone down. Mm-hmm. That could be the case. That is, and it's just morphed into some, you know, uh, cycle of, of laziness, honestly. Mm-hmm. But, I think they they learned it from someone. I don't think it's just something they just picked up off the street and was like, oh, I'm going to do it this way. Because I didn't even know all these rules about, you know, having dependents and all this and that to try and get food stamps. Not because I haven't wanted to get them in the past because, you know, I I want to eat every now and then. I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but I think some of the little intricacies and the, the ways to get around the system, that stuff you learn from someone else. Yeah. Your yeah, social worker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, find those loopholes. And and like even when you were talking about the expectations, so I I saw this article today, like if kids are trying to get jobs. And so this what well, this kind of goes in a different direction. So I I'm a take it in a different direction right quick. But um about how um people that are working like in fast food and stuff are trying to get the minimum wage uh raised to fifteen dollars an hour. Mm. And honestly, it made me feel some type of way because yeah. Um, yeah, there are a lot of people, first of all, that, okay. And I feel like I got to make a whole lot of disclaimers so people won't be cussing me the fuck out in the house. <laughs> so anything I say, just know I'm not generalizing to everybody. I would never generalize. That's because I, I just wouldn't do that. So I'm going to stop making disclaimers because that's my last one. So my thing is, not saying that you don't want anything from your life if you just work at McDonald's. Not saying that. But my thing is there are a lot of people that are trying, like we're just talking about expectations and trying to be more. They're trying to be more. They're going to school. They're trying to get an education. So, and then they have tons and tons of debt because they're trying to be more. And then they come out and they don't even make $15 an hour. And so like I get that they're trying to help people like not live in poverty. They're trying to like, I get that part of it. But my thing is, well, what about the people like ourselves that, well, I don't, what about the working poor, the people or the people? I mean, I feel like a lot of people that have gone to college and have degrees are working poor. Like you work just to pay your bills. And after like, you have no money after your bills and stuff are paid. So what about their increases? Like, what about, them making more money because they put in more of an effort to be able to try to have a different type of life. Hmm. I I see all of your points. Mm-hmm. I, I I definitely see where you're coming from and you have all valid points. Mm-hmm. All of them, not discrediting any of that. Just speaking specifically to the people that are trying to get more on a minimum wage, I can't fault them for that because the minimum wage was created to establish a like a minimum wage to basically live on and it has not adjusted with inflation. 
Now, to your point, like you said before, you know, that all other salaries minus those that are in the top, you know, let's say five, 10 percent. All of our wages haven't increased to adjust with inflation either. Exactly. So, you know, you know we have a, uh, a right or you know, a privilege or whatever. We have a right to re- ask that our salaries be on the same line as inflation. But again, just speaking with the just speaking from in terms of people on minimum wage, the money they're making isn't even at that line to even be considered, um, I guess, livable. Like the money they're making is keeping them below the poverty line. So I think they do have a right to ask that their money be increased so that they can bare minimum hit the poverty line. I don't know what that amount is. If it's $15, cool. If it's, you know, they just pick that arbitrary number, I don't know. But then you get into the whole, well, these jobs weren't created for people trying to live anyway, just thinking about fast food people anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, I've heard the argument that those jobs weren't created for people to raise a family off of anyway. Those jobs were created for, you know, like high school kids or, or something mm-hmm. like that, which, okay, I get it. But at the same time, some people stop at high school. They don't go to college. They have no desire to go to college. College isn't mm-hmm. for everybody. It really isn't. It is not. So at what point then? Are there jobs out there for people who have only a high school education uh, or GED equivalent? Like those jobs are those minimum wage jobs now, because at this point in 2015, having a bachelor's degree is, you know, having a high school uh, diploma. It's like the workforce is, what's the correct term? Workforce is maybe, I guess, let's say pricing people out. So okay. if you don't, if you don't have a certain level of education, you're not even going to make a wage that is livable. So you Mm -hmm. have to go down to like those, those fast food jobs where you're getting paid just minimum wage every single hour. I think they have a right to ask for those raises, whether or not they get them. I don't know, but I think that everyone deserves to work at a job. If they're going to work full time, they deserve to work at a job that will pay them bare minimum. Like I said, bare minimum enough that they could be at the poverty line. We, you know, Claim to be land of the free home of the brave. Sorry, I'm on my soapbox <laughs> right now. But <laughs> we cannot be, we cannot claim to be the greatest country in the world like we do every time someone is on TV. Mm-hmm. And we have all these people out here that are working, legitimately working, and yet they are below the poverty line that is set for this country. That, that, we can't continue to spout that land of the free home of the brave bullshit if we're just gonna let our people keep living like this it's it's not right mm-hmm. yeah and now i'm gonna step now i'm gonna step off my soapbox like hop down right quick. okay <laughs> uh, so i have a question in answered well in relation to what you just said so say this 15 dollar minimum wage is passed and again i know people um but so i can well i can only come from a mental health perspective community mental health pays absolutely no money and so I know people that, you know, have gone to school and they make maybe $12 an hour or 10 to $12 an hour. So do you think that it would have like some kind of um, negative side effect where people are like, well, what's the use of me going to school when all I have to do is go work at McDonald's up the street and I make more doing that? Do you think that's a mindset that would be adapted where people are like, okay, well, I can make this much doing this and I'll be good. So that mindset that is adapted is I won't try to go further than just this because $15 an hour sounds good. I don't think that's the case because to be sure, uh, I would think that wages would rise across the board if not to that level or just a little bit above. But a $15 an hour sounds good until you only work in like five or six hours a week. Like Mm -hmm. that's really what it is. Like you working at McDonald's, you're not getting over 20 hours a week or 25 hours. You're not full time. So you're not seeing all that money like that. Like for a person who's working 40 hours a week or, you know, doing that with benefits, that's not what you're getting. You getting somebody who's just still barely making and doing like three and four hours a day and going home and that's it. That, okay. Yeah, I don't see it being like, oh yeah, I'm about to go get rich at McDonald's. Yeah, I'm about to go live 
and go eat the human. <laughs> <laughs> on this son on them. <laughs> stunt at the fry, at the fry. I'm about uh, to go buy bottles after I get off. <laughs> buy bottles at the club after no, I get off on that's Friday. That's not happening. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I don't think it's happening either. Now, uh, this was one of the arguments I heard from, I, I don't remember the CEO, but it was, it was some CEO that was saying, if we raise the minimum wage, that means that we're going to have to raise our prices to make up for that and blah, blah, blah. That is, I see that happening. Yeah, that, that would happen only because these CEOs don't want to take a pay cut themselves. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why they exactly. want all the money to go into their pocket. So I call bullshit on that whole, if exactly. we raise prices or if we raise minimum wage, we're going to have to raise prices. No, you just stop being a greedy motherfucker and put some of that money back down to your employees. The people that are making you look good for shareholders, those are the ones you need to be rewarding with, with higher pay. Not you, because you're not doing anything. You're just a figurehead, to be honest. Because yeah. the company would run whether or not you were there. Pretty much. I agree. So, oh. that's what I'm saying, too. That okay. So, so, that's that better. <laughs> <laughs> so, if at the end of the day... Like no matter what level it's on, it's it sounds like from you know what you're saying is at the end of the day it's always politics. Mm-hmm. So whether it's politics that are determining whether or not we set expectations for our kids in the house, or whether it's politics that are determining whether we don't necessarily. Well, have- I'm gonna leave that uh, expectation shit in the house to the parents, and I understand that it's maybe generational and well uh, that. Uh, that, uh, I forget what the term is, but that whole thing where, you know, where the system is just set up that way and mm-hmm. it makes mm-hmm. it whatever. The institutional I get, racism. Yeah, the institutional racism bullshit. I get that, but that ain't so, bullshit. That shit no, real, honey. It's true. Absolutely. It's true. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if people keep saying this shit, yeah, I'll, now I'll if you're gonna use it as an excuse or exactly. you're gonna do something about it, if you see it happening, then wake the fuck up and do something about it. Like break out of that shit. Like raise your child different. Yeah, you could be in poverty, but you expect your child to be better than you are. Like, yeah, I'm stuck in this shit, and this is how I'm have to get y'all educated. But you ain't gonna go on and do this. This ain't it. Yeah. This ain't it. Yeah. It stops right here. Not that. Oh well, that's how my mama did it. Shit. I, generations of family been living in the projects for twenty, thirty, forty, fifty years. And nobody ever gets out and nobody ever does anything but just go on and keep doing the same thing. Yeah. No. At some point somebody needs to wake up and like, oh yeah, this done this is not really working. This is not the real dream right here. Yeah, and that's what I was about to uh I was about to go with it. Like how do you like if you know, that's how it is in a home and there are no real expectations set, like how do you create like a generation of like dream chasers? Like people that have goals and they can see beyond their current and present situation. Does it start with a parent or can it start with other outside influence? It can probably start with other outside influence, but it definitely has to start with the parent who is there every single day or a parent who is there every single day. I would be, I think. Well, I, I slightly disagree with the, it has to start with the parents. It would be great if it started with the parents. Cause like you said, they're with their parents more than anyone else, but it should be. It should be. And yeah, you're right. They <laughs> should be with their parents more than anyone else, but. I think to create a, a, a generation of dream chasers or, you know, goal oriented or ambitious people, you surround yourself with that. If, mm-hmm. if you have, if you know that you are greater than what you're looking at or what you're surrounded by, then surround yourself with pe- with like-minded people. Because if you stay with people who are, you know, have that crabs in a barrel mentality, then get, then at the end of the day, you're going to be one of those crabs too. Yes. So you have to think outside the box and take some of that responsibility on yourself to go find someone that, that is, is trying to do something or, or be something better. And, you know, it could be trying to find a mentor or, or just, you know, hanging around a different group of people at school or wherever you go. Now, if someone has this mentality as a child, God bless that child because this is something that some people don't learn until adulthood. Mm-hmm. And that's, and I think that is part of the problem because this type of thinking is, is so complex that it's, it's beyond the scope of what a child could, could think of. And that's where, like you were saying, that it, it, it starts with the parent where the parent has to instill that in the kid. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like at, 
in the beginning because I think mm-hmm. last week we were talking about like uh children like the it what were we saying whenever we were talking about the uh Asian people and how they are so tough on their children I was referencing my aunt who was like you know tough on her children just because she knows that they can be better mm-hmm. and she doesn't accept like excuses from them when she knows that they are capable of doing whatever I think that's the thing that I'm saying like a uh, parent like you said has to give a child some sort of expectation like know who they are and fucking like help guide them to be the best of them i guess Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i agree okay well yeah i definitely agree so i mean i know you guys personally and so i feel that i can confidently confidently say that you as well as myself are dreamers so um even if you don't share with the family everything like what is like your major or what is your dream for yourself oh 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 um Ooh. i'm gonna let oliver go first on fuck i gotta think about this i don't know <laughs> put me on the spot that's what, I mean, that's what it is now i got a question my okay. dream for myself is it something that i would like to that I dream that I'm able to do for other people. Uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, and you may have more than one dream for yourself, but yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. My, my biggest dream, I, I would say would be just get to a point where I can support her financially so that she doesn't have to worry about anything else. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if she wants something, she can have it because she sacrificed so much for me growing up as a kid working two, sometimes three jobs just so, you know, my little knucklehead ass could have clothes and food and, and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, you know, little Sega Genesis when I wanted one. <laughs> so <laughs> y'all, y'all don't understand how happy I was when I got that Genesis though. That, <laughs> that was great. But looking back on it, I, I, I see how much she had to work just to make that happen. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just want to be able to get to a point where I can do that same thing for her. Like if she wants something done around the house, I got it. I got it taken care of. Don't even worry about it. You ain't got to worry about it. You know? Yeah. That's my dream. So I just want my mom to be comfortable. Okay. Oliver. So sweet. (laughs) (laughs) I share in that dream that Terrence has also, but also for myself and expanding bigger because I understand that I can't, I mean, I got a, I got, my family's huge, like Mm -hmm. very big and I can't, I, it's a lot of pressure for me to think that I could do it by myself, but mm-hmm. it's to either like inspire people around me somehow or another to be better or be different or be, you know, the best of themselves to, I guess at the end of the day, raise everybody up. That's it. I guess. Mm-hmm. So it'll be, okay. that would be it. I guess. I don't know. I don't know how that sounds. Uh, if, 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 no, that's a good, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And my dream for myself is to be able, and it kind of reminds me what you just said, um, is to be able to show people that they can have a different kind of life. I feel like a lot of people feel like this is how it is and that's just how it's going to be, Like, especially if they've been through a lot in the past. And so my dream for myself is to be able, I don't have the power to change life, but be able to influence someone to see that they can change their lives if they want to for yeah. the better. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Kind of saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, we're all alike. So, yeah, um, whether you come from a home that has, you know, high expectations where they set you up for success or whether you come from a home with little to no expectations and they don't set you up for success you have the power to do and be whatever it is that you want to be all right so family let us know what your dreams are what you're doing to establish the next set of dream chasers in your life or even become one yourself send us an email talk.swn at gmail.com and we'll be back after this All right, 
and we are back. Now, we don't have a game today, but I do want to talk about uh, something real quick because Halloween just passed recently and we are fast approaching Thanksgiving. And, you know, once Thanksgiving comes, Christmas is right around the corner. So we, I, I like to say we're in the holiday season right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what are some things for you all that if it doesn't happen, then the holiday season is kind of a bust, I say. Like for me, just as an example, if I don't hit Temptation Solid Night, Christmas just isn't Christmas. Was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. In my mind. Yeah. Well, yeah. I remember one time I didn't hear it till like Christmas Day, and for every day of it, I was like, it's not Christmas because I ain't heard it on the radio. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely one thing for me. One another thing is we have a family tradition where we go to South Carolina. My dad's from South Carolina, so we go there every Thanksgiving. So if we don't go there, then it it's just not the same. It ain't yeah. Thanksgiving. It's mm-hmm. not Thanksgiving. Yeah. Also coming home, I head into Goldsboro. If y'all ain't there, it just oh Jesus, it just ain't <laughs> oh, the same, yeah. honey. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas. Family, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For y'all that don't know, the Friday after Thanksgiving or the Saturday after Thanksgiving, I usually see all of them. And Christmas Eve, I usually see all of them. Like it has been a tradition going. I know since I since we were in high school, because mm-hmm. I remember getting off work one time in high school, going to your house, Jay, and everybody was there watching the movie in the dark. I didn't realize it had been that long, Lord Jesus. It but had yeah, been that long. Yeah. Definitely, Christmas Eve is a tradition, and if that don't happen, it's not Christmas. Like I don't know what to tell nobody. You ain't opening no <laughs> gifts until everybody comes to the house. <laughs> How about you? What, what are some, some things you have? Uh, my have? family, if I don't have them, child, it ain't, it, it is not <laughs> no holiday season. Like my grandma and everybody was like, you coming home with Thanksgiving? I'm like, what else am I going to do? <laughs> 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 I ain't going to sit here by myself. No. <laughs> uh, that's a, that's a bad feeling too. There was one year where I could not come home for Thanksgiving because I had to work the next day. It, uh, it is a terrible yeah. thing. I was so sad that Thanksgiving day. It's so yeah. sad. I did that one time when I lived in Atlanta. I didn't come home for Thanksgiving and I broke up with my boyfriend that night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not <my> goal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just. Nigga should have known how to <laughs> exactly. cook a turkey. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, definitely being around the family is good. Yeah. But I do see from me a lot though. Yeah. Now, for me, I, there's certain things I need to watch on TV. I need to see Great, Great Pumpkin. Go around Halloween for Charlie Brown. I need to see the Thanksgiving one. I guess it's Happy Thanksgiving, Charlie Brown. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. Charlie Brown. I I love (laughs) Charlie Brown. And I need to see Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown around Christmas time because I I just need to see it because everything. And this is a conversation for a totally different day. I got questions about that whole Charlie Brown universe because those kids don't have parents apparently. And they just, they wanted the street. Y'all but seen I, Charlie I haven't Brown seen Charlie Brown. Brown since I was little. I never got that in depth with Charlie okay. Brown. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not even getting that in depth. It's just looking around like, wait a minute, these are children. Where the Well, parents? who the, who the, <laughs> <laughs> That's their teacher, the one adult you ha- you see, and you don't even see her. You just hear huh. her voice. So it could be a recorder yeah. for all we know. Like that, Charlie Brown is the biggest case of child negligence I've ever seen in my life. I got a little watch Charlie Brown. Yeah, go back and watch it and and look for some parents. These kids out here cooking Thanksgiving dinner by themselves, going trick or treating by themselves. That's dangerous. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to research that. But okay, so one thing that I I don't even watch it anymore because it's like three four hours long. Mm. But I check the preview guide channel to make sure that it is on. (laughs) Is a Christmas story. How do the little piggies go? That's right. Oik, oik. Now, show me how the piggies eat. <gasps> Mama, mommy's little piggy. <laughs> oh, my that, God. That it, it just, it just takes, because, you know, TNT will, like, run it all day. Mm-hmm. So all I do is just check to make sure it's on. I don't want to watch it no more. I have seen it entirely too many times, but I do always make sure that it's on. I still watch it. I don't care. I watch it at least two, three times. I don't care. I love that movie. And I got it on DVD, and I still will sit in front of a TV Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and I will watch a Christmas story. That is one of my best, one of the fa- my favorite movies ever, Christmas Story, is is mm. amazing. 
Y'all are so sensitive because I don't watch any <laughs> Christmas movie. Oh, well, yeah, I need that. I need Christmas story in my life because I just needed to feel like Christmas. <laughs> well, yeah, that's where the cold and everything comes in. That's why I cannot be in California because <laughs> I need the changing of the season. Yeah, because like I said earlier, you know, I, it is November and I'm in California and the weather was amazing today. It was. Feels like March or April. It does. All right, fam. So those are some of the things that we like during the holidays. What are some of the things that you like? Uh, you can send us an email. Again, talk.swn at gmail.com. Talk.swn at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at SWN Podcast. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com backslash SWN Podcast. And you can subscribe to us on Twitter, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, Google Play. Rate, review us, give us those five-star ratings. It will boost us, give us a broader audience. So, again, we can do bigger and better things for you in the future. So, again, send us an email, talk.swn at gmail.com. And until next week. Y'all, um, bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> y'all, um, bye. <laughs> I want to say y'all have a good week, but I never really know what day of the week I'm on. And so I didn't know if it was a good weekend. I didn't know. I'm sorry. <laughs>